So as soon as I finished that last video, I realized that there is far too much to cover on this and we needed a part two. And so the mines themselves are not always the specific cause of acid mine drain. A big part of it, but another one, if you look out through the woods here, you see these piles. These are all comb banks, slate piles, slate dumps, whichever one you want to call them. And these can be another big contributing factor. And so all the rock from the mine, it gets broken up and it's, you know, some of it's still coal, slate, um, the pyrites, all your metals now sit out on surface and are free to oxidize out in the weather and get rained on, snowed on. And these are a lot harder to control because this water is going anywhere. It's seeping into the ground, it's running into the ditches, it's into the creeks, many different spots. Um, in the last video, if you notice, I'll take you over here, you can see there's a uh, you kind of see these lighter, lighter colored rocks down in that water. And that's actually slate and coal because at one point, uh, believed to be through spontaneous combustion, these coal banks actually caught fire. And so that's going to speed up your oxidization process and make the issue a little bit worse. Um, another non-mining cause of acid drainage would be if you look at the sky top cut when they put in the I-99 around State College, Pennsylvania. They went through a zone that was extremely high in pyrites. Um, and zinc, lead, other metals. And so it was already pretty close to the surface and digging through it just made the situation worse. Um, some of the pictures from that project, I mean, the, the water that was settling out in the basins was blood red. And so if you drive through there now, you notice there's a, like a honeycomb pattern matting that's down on the edges of the cuts. And I believe, I'm not sure, but I believe it's limestone sitting on top. And then they also have other sediment basins sediment basins um, and limestone beds to help control and treat that. Uh, they're starting to discover also that even though acid mine drainage is bad, it's everywhere and we can help take advantage of it. So a lot of the metals that are dissolved in the water can be economic at certain mine sites. And so your iron, your lead, zinc, uranium, anything else that's, that's in that water, with a correctly designed treatment system, you can separate those metals out and then sell them. Or at least the oxides would be a rough ore, but you could sell it. And so now not only are you helping the stream, but you can also help turn a profit off the metals that are in it that can keep your treatment system going. So yeah, it's a it's a sad problem for Pennsylvania, um, especially because these systems are not cheap, and with only so much money lotted to them each year, as you build new ones, you still also have to maintain your old systems. Um, it said in the last video there was a, on this particular stream, there was a second basin down at the bottom that took another, you know, percentage of the creek and ran it through, but I believe it was the 2011 flood, um, took that out. Um, and if you're out exploring, driving around old mine lands, and you come across a sediment basin, don't drive through them. <laughs> um, one thing, we, we would like to, to keep these systems in a nice shape as possible. Um, so please respect them and let them do their thing. As always, if anyone has any questions, please feel free to let me know. I know I didn't cover every 
every aspect, but as we get around, um, we'll be getting the rest of it covered. So again, I appreciate everyone's support. Hope everyone's doing well. See you in the next video. Thank you.